Hellman's, I keep saying. Hellman's Mayo. Sponsor our podcast. We need a sponsor. We need a sponsor. So today we're talking about all the other avenues of obtaining food besides a brick and mortar. Oh, is that what you want to talk about? Yeah. Oh. What I want to know is you taught yourself, you created that menu. Well, uh, I mean, I taught myself through YouTube how to cook and how right. to turn on shit. But like I brought, to, to be honest, I brought a guy that had just graduated from culinary school. You know, you learn from different people, obviously, that, I mean, that, that come in the truck and cook and, and, and you learn you know, different small things. You so, pick up little yeah. things here and there. So I don't, I, I mean, YouTube, yes, was my school. But I think when you're practicing whatever you learned on online, it's important to have somebody that at least knows something. Right. Right. So you created that menu, though, when you were on the Yeah, 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 yeah. We created that menu. I mean, it was me. It was, at that time, I had a partner in the truck, Nils. Um, who's a great friend of mine, um, and he was involved, and this gentleman that we brought in was involved. But yeah, I mean, I learned how to do red velvet pancakes on YouTube. That we ha we had to do that. You had red velvet pancakes on the truck. Yeah, because we had to. <laughs> it was funny. The only way that we could get into the Maitland uh, farmers market, mm -hmm. or like the Maitland Wednesday night event thing right we had to do the maitland farmer's market on sunday morning oh so you had to have a breakfast item yeah we had to have breakfast so it was like what are we gonna do and i said let's just look for recipes online to do pancakes sounds delicious it was good but people were like oh that's the stoner food truck because we did fried stuff like yeah i mean fried stuff is the easiest thing to cook and to learn how to do and the most consistent so keep it simple stupid that's it Keep it simple. Got it. But, I mean, we even got into fights. Or, well, I got into fights with a chef over chocolate chip cookie. Why? What do you mean a chocolate chip cookie? It was Jason, the chef that was working with us, Jason Carlucci, and his wife was doing the desserts, and she did a chocolate chip cookie with Molden salt. And Molden salt. Molden salt. salt. Oh, yeah, it's Molden. Molden yeah. sea salt, I think. Sea salt, yeah. That's and really nice flaky salt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. We, you know, we love salt. We love salt. Yeah. She did this cookie and one of the chefs in the other truck had done the cookie like a month prior. So it was just like, here we go. And we got into it in the middle of the event. We almost kicked our ass over this cookie. Oh my God. It was so stupid. You almost got into like a real fight? Yeah. Over the cookie? Over a chocolate chip cookie. And we, we look back and we're like, Whoa. that was so That was silly. so funny. And that's, he started calling me the, the stoner truck. And I was like, yeah, but I sell more than you. So I don't care. Mic drop. Mic and then drop, you yeah. <laughs> walked away. Yeah. Do you still, though, like, do, like, continue education? Like, you keep learning? I know every once in a while you'll come and be like, I was watching this and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I think you, you watch a lot of stuff online, obviously. I still watch a lot of stuff online. But, like. I think more and more I just get into the small details. Like this this week, for example, I've been bitching about the bread for the uh, banh mi. Banh mi. Um, and we just have to find a supplier that has better bread. Which has been an ongoing issue. I, my things are ongoing. Right. They never disappear. I think, you know, our pork needs help, but yeah. it's gotten better. It has gotten better. But it's not there yet. Yeah. And I figured out something that I want to try. But the thing is, like, trying in a machine that's running is, a, is hard. It's hard. Nobody has time. Nobody has time to do, you know, we research and development. We don't want to experiment with yeah, you. Nobody's yeah, on nobody wants to play night, with dinner rush. <laughs> yeah, nobody wants to experiment with me. Yeah, nobody wants to experiment with me. No one wants to play in the sandbox with you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to fix this pork situation. And I call people and I look online and I found, you know... I'm going to try some garlic paste on some... Garlic paste? Yeah. You're going to rub the whole pork yeah. belly in it? Mm, that might pork, help. pork butt. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah, sorry. Pork, pork butt. butt. Yeah. But anyways, yes, I do still watch a lot of stuff. I think the difference is, though, it's, it's the same thing. Like, everybody gets so excited about, about people doing these small events. 
when these small event people want to go into the restaurant business yeah. and they got volume, good luck. It's a different animal. It's a whole different animal. And people don't understand that. Like, you got to change some of the procedures to be able to do the volume. A lot of people think it's really easy, once their food truck is successful, to open a brick and mortar. <laughs> and is this you being quiet because you're like, little do they know? <laughs> this is him being quiet because little do they know. You know, I always throw out this line when somebody comes and talks to me about turning a food truck into a restaurant. Hey, man. Do you know how much, or hey ma'am, or hey ma'am, do you know how much your insurance is going to cost at the restaurant level? Oh no, I don't know. Well, it's $19,000 a year. And they go, ooh, well, that's the first one. Mm -hmm. Things that you don't see, yeah. like in the food truck world, right? We pay $45,000 in credit card fees a year. Bonkers. Bonkers, it's like paying another employee, right? It's stuff that you don't see. And we're one unit. I mean, imagine the other day I was with somebody. He has a ton of units and his insurance was a million and a half dollars a year. And I was like, freak. What do you do with that? I mean, obviously you pay it. Yeah, yeah. obviously you're like, it's it's so different, right? So volume, volume translates into having to change the menu item. Yeah. And... I think a lot of people that are in the food truck world obviously have this mentality of feeding people in a two hour span. Right. And I could turn on my truck and turn off my truck whenever I want. So if I decide that Thursday through Sunday I want to go on vacation, I'm not doing any events. Yeah, it's fine. I yeah. Can. Well, it doesn't work like that in the, in the, in the real world. Right? right. In the restaurant world. You have to be open. I mean, I was... Uh, I tell you, I mean, we never closed. Never. And then all of a sudden, obviously, this year we had we had a situation where we have to close on Mondays. And I think it's been great. But typically... That hasn't been the norm. No. Seven days a week. Open. Don't be late to open the restaurant. Right? Because there are people waiting. There's people that arrive there at 1045. And, and you have to be consistent with that. It's true. I always think, even if you have good food or bad food, if you're consistent with that... People are going to like it. If you have shitty food and you're consistently shitty, people will still go. Yeah. And I think customer service plays into that. Now. 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 Before yeah, you no. could get away with. Shitty service. Shitty service. Yeah. Now it's like you say hello the wrong way and you're. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You're different. not in a good spot. No. No. I think the customer service, a lot of people are, the expectations high. But the funny thing is you go to big cities and the service is Terrible. Terrible. I mean, I went to New York. Service was terrible. Miami, service is terrible. L.A., service is terrible. Like, you're like... I can't give ter terrible customer service. I can't. No, I can't give customer service that sucks. And these restaurants, you come... Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It's crazy. It is. I feel like in the food truck world, you wait like, you know, 30, 40 minutes for your food, and that's the norm. People, for us, like, you're, they're waiting 20 minutes, and they're like... Where's my food? Well, I think it's different, right? Because the expectation is different from a guest standpoint. When you go to a restaurant, the moment that the guest sits at the table, we've I think I've repeated this, they start counting the number of minutes times two. Yeah, time's ticking. Right? So if you have a 10-minute ticket time, they really think it's a 20-minute ticket time. Mm -hmm. And that obviously creates tension because that's why I, I always tell you guys, Let's focus on the people that are coming to the restaurant and are making the investment in their time. Yeah. And take care of them. Yesterday I was in the unit. They do a lot of to-go. And he was like, man, our to-go business is humongous and we don't make as much money mm -mm. because they have to share it with a third party. Oh, dang. So he's like, I love it, but I hate it. Right? And I'm not, we're not about that life. Mm -mm. I've always told you, I'm not doing third party. I f but I do feel like more people are getting away from it. Um, I know that it's a lot, like a ton of places do it, but I have seen a little bit of a trend like in the forums and like people I follow, like that they're starting to move away from this third party service just because they can't control it. I said it, it from the beginning. Yeah. I said it from the beginning and people were criticizing me. They were like, oh, I can't believe you're not doing third party. Yeah, I don't want a new partner in my business. Why? It is a new partner. 20, 25%. 
of the ticket I'm going to give to a third party for a delivery. But the consumer doesn't understand that. For barbecue, we would price ourselves out of the market. When you people see this online and they go, whoa, that's expensive. Well, yeah, barbecue is expensive because it's protein intense, right? So as protein goes up in price, we go up in price. So I really like doing pop-ups. I think it provides a lot of value for a few different reasons. One being it's a second source of income without having a ton of overhead. We already have all the things to go mm-hmm. somewhere off-site. And then second, you you know, it's kind of a faster pace, different from being in the restaurant. Third, I think you can learn a lot about that market wherever you are. I'm opposed to it because of the disruption that it causes at the store level. I'm, I'm, listen, I don't even cook my chicken breast at my store because I don't want to disrupt the regular business practices of the day to day. Okay. When you throw a loop in, in events and stuff like that, I think it defocuses from, you know, what we have at hand, the running of the store on a day to day basis. It's cool. Pop-ups are cool, right? Right. But I think we always have to keep that focus on how do we run the store on a daily basis, especially now that we don't have a lot of staff. But it's not necessarily any different than a really large catering order. You're going out there and trying to sell, and then you come back at me and you told me we sold 500 bucks. I would have preferred to do a catering order that was two grand and not 500. This is an interesting perspective that I'm hearing. I'm just saying, right? You go do a pop-up for 500 bucks. Are we going to make money on that? Probably not. Are we going to get people to come to the restaurant? Maybe. Maybe. Right? So then I look at it as a return on investment. Yeah. If I had you at the store or if we were focused on the store, would we have done better in making more money at the store and focus on our product and focus on our execution than going on a pop-up and... I don't want to say bullshit because it's not bullshit, but you know what it is. Like people start asking questions and, oh my God, this is so good. Or how do you do this? And But you don't see it as future business too? I do. I see everything as future business. Mentioning somebody in the elevator that I sell barbecue is probably future business. But Okay. And I think anybody that tries the product knows that it's good, right? Mm-hmm. But again, let's, let's look at the other angle. What if you did that? pop up right and the product was not good true because it wasn't hot because you went to the event there's no place to put the food right you try to put it in your hot hold and it doesn't keep the food warm you know and then now you have 50 to 100 people trying that and and they go it's subpar well it's okay right boom that has never happened to us by the way okay that we know of that we know of i should say right but I mean, I don't know. I guess maybe I'm a control freak in that sense. Like, if I know that I have the product at the store and we still mess up, Mm -hmm. still, imagine putting other factors in. Travel, you know, uh, the events outside, it's raining, this, that. There are a lot of factors that we can't control. There are a lot of factors that we can control. And the food truck, it was that way. Like, you know, I have a kitchen, I'm set up, but what if the generator turns off? Or what if, you know... I didn't, the the burger today didn't, I didn't cook it to the right temperature. So those are the things that you worry about when we're doing stuff offsite. Yeah. I worry about that. I worry about your safety. I worry about liability. I worry about about, safety. Yeah. I worry about a bunch of stuff. Like (laughs) that's tender. It's different. Tender. That's an interesting perspective because it's like, I think about those things, but I don't think about those things. Like I just, for me, I take a more like positive route on it. And I'm like, this is a cool <clears> opportunity <throat> for us. I'm, and I'm sorry, I may sound negative. Right. And I am not trying to be a negative Nancy. I am positive about doing these events. I'm just, you know, with disruption of the store, that's the, that's the biggest concern that I have. Because then I hear it. I hear, well, we did this pop-up and then, you know, the store didn't perform or this happened at the store and then, and you're like, okay. It's a double-edged sword. I understand that. I'm all about pop-ups, right? Like pigs up. We got to do pop-ups. Yeah. I'm, I'm high then, believer of this. Right. So how do we do pop-ups with pigs though? Because it's not going to be the same oven that we're going to be using at the store. I know. So then I'm going to give you a different product. And you're going to taste that different product and that's your expectation yeah that worries me a lot a lot 
right? So the only way that we could do a pop-up is as soon as that oven goes and we connect it. We're, we're out like, in the parking lot. We're out in the parking lot. There's a pop-up in that parking lot. Yeah, exactly. That's the only way we're going to be able to do it. Yeah. Well, Wait, all right. let's go back to food halls and ghost kitchens. I'm going back because this is another debate that we have on the regular. <laughs> so you have definitely been approached to go into a food hall at, at least once. <laughs> There's no chance that you haven't. And I think that they're really cool. Like, especially when they're done right. I will say there have been a few misses that have happened in this market with the food hall game. But, you know, we do have some shining stars. So why have you never gone into one? Or what, like, is it, was it just never the right opportunity? Or you don't feel like it's a good space for you? Um, I don't feel it's a good space for barbecue. I think it's a good space for pizza, tacos, I mean, anything Mexican related, burgers, fries, stuff like that, sandwiches, I think it's great, you know? Sure. I think that's more of a to-go kind I of know. deal, right? Domu Wings, they do a great job with that. They've been pretty successful with it, right? Very. Um, people like wings to go. But now let's think about it. Wings are at an all-time high price-wise. They are. Right? Nobody's communicating this to the guest. No. The guest goes on Uber, DoorDash, looks at the menu. Wings are now, you know, a count of 12. I don't know how much it is right now. 25 bucks? No idea. Something crazy. And they're like, whoa. What happened? What happened? Domo Wings got so expensive. Yeah. Then you have no way of explaining to them like, hey, wings are at an all-time high. I think it's really important to educate the consumer with whatever that you're doing, right? Whether like, you know, we have the behind the scenes series, like right now, distribution costs are at all time high. Like, I think it's really important that we share that knowledge so that when they come into the restaurant or when they visit us for whatever reason, whether we had another location or whatever, they understand why the price has gone up. Mm -hmm. But it's like something that we don't talk about. Like, oh, like it's like this huge taboo. But like, this no, is I'm the not reality about of it. talking about it. And I think we should actually. Now we have a situation going on with everything is up. Everything. Everything is like, like ridiculous. Every single item. Every item. So now we have to put it out there. Yeah. Hey, unfortunately, we're going to have to raise the price. Brisket, for example, through the pandemic, at one point it was $6.50 a pound, which was crazy. And I, I, we we raise prices instantly but typically brisket runs between the 230 to 250 range and right now we're at five dollars already and it's not going away it's not going down right. anytime soon what do we do we have to raise the price because we have to take care of the business and the business needs to keep operating i mean there's times that i take i'll take the l and you know i'll leave food costs a little high but this time we can't you can't do it forever right it's so, not sustainable it all goes back to creating the whole brand and creating that brand book in in my head right of where i think the brand should go do i think eventually we might do a ghost kitchen maybe so i really want to open a ghost kitchen and but was, for ribs but for ribs like i want us to have a variety of different rib flavors and then you know we should do a rib window in a 500 square foot place that's what i want to do so i've been like talking to him i plant the seed and then i water it this is me watering it right now because i really want to do this rib window <laughs> i think it would be so great like our ribs sell out all the time like there's obviously demand for them having a variety of flavors would be epic and i just think it's a no-brainer minimal overhead no brainer minimal staff we don't have to think about anything. I didn't say we don't think about anything. <laughs> I'm just saying it's a lot less to operate than an entire second location. I don't disagree. Less investment probably too. Yeah, less investment, less overhead, less everything. Okay, let's do the damn rib window here. The rib window is happening. I feel it in my bones. <laughs> okay, so you don't think barbecue is a good spot for a food hall. That's why you've never gone into one. Well, we go back to my first episode. I wrote a check, and whenever I decide to sell my company, I got to get to that number. And then whatever I do, I, I'm basically trying to make sure that I'm 
able to get to that number. And if I put my units in food halls, there's no value in that. You don't see like that. That's there's not no in value. your big plan. There's not. There's no value in it because you're doing food halls. How much sales can you do out of a food hall? Probably less than you could do out of a unit, right? And then some of these food halls have full full liquor, and who's keeping that is the owner of the food hall. Mm, okay. Right, and that's that's sometimes cures part of our food cost problem. So why am I going to give that to somebody else? Oh, let me do it myself and build value. Build a value in whatever store we buy. Yeah, yeah. We do a rib window, it's fine. Okay. We do a couple of rib windows. They make money. But I'm just saying a unit gives the company more value in Your the own long unit. run. My own unit. Right. Yeah. My own lease. I have a right to sell something that has volume. Would you do a food truck over a food hall? I can move that. You can move it. It's I can mobile. move the truck. I can go to a different market like you have here in your notes. Right? I think that's a big deal. It is. Like going to a different market and seeing if there's a demand for you before but you there's open. there's going to be a demand. You, yeah, you, but. You, you put a food truck anywhere and you say, oh, this new barbecue company is coming. People are going to go crazy because they're going to go check the Instagram. They're going to see the food and they're going to be like, oh, do you have the Whopper? And you're in a food truck and you're like, no, 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 we don't have the Whopper. I don't have the Whopper here. Right. We have ribs, we have chicken and we have brisket. Good luck. Maybe po you would have pork. Oh, pork too. Yeah. But I'm just saying, good luck. Yeah, we got a brisket sandwich and a pork sandwich. Anything else, sir? Okay. So I have a question for you. Are you doing this with pizza? Doing what? You watching the history oh, of pizza? Yeah, I, watched, I, I watched every fucking pizza show there is. Every pizza show. Pretty much. I watch every. I mean, I think I, if you could, you could ask Al if I know how to do pizza. I mean, mentally, I think I do. You could do Physically, it. Physically, I don't think I can do it. I kind of want to see that. I feel like we should video your journey of making a pizza. I, I think that's not a bad idea. Vic, there you go. Yes. I love pizza. Everybody loves pizza. <laughs> Everybody does love pizza. It's true. Everybody. So how do you feel about pop-up people who are going into ghost kitchens or going to the brick and mortar side do you feel like that's an even bigger leap from the food truck scene to them well that's what's happening now people it's aren't buying the food truck they're just going the pop-up route and then they go you know do a restaurant and then again here we go again the consistency issue hey you have to open every day you got to have staff you got to have insurance you got to have blah, 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 blah. it's a lot it's a lot I don't think people understand how yeah, much it's a lot. Is. It's a lot. It's taking care of guests into the restaurant and training people to be able to take care of the guests at the restaurant. I mean, we're lucky. We're, our team is great. Our right? team is great. But it goes through ups and downs. And it's just natural progression um, in the business that we're in, restaurants, right? I think pop-ups are great. I know there's a couple of barbecue pop-ups going on around Orlando right now, and it's great that they're doing amazing product. Come on, join the other side. Let's do volume. The dark side. <laughs> let's do volume. Let's 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 get excited. Let's 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 get you on every day selling barbecue, you know. And let me tell you, oh, you're gonna do your sausage at the store. You're gonna make it at your store. Yeah. In right. mass quantity, too. In mass quantity and keep up with it. It's not easy. You could do it. I'm not saying you don't do it. There's people that do it. It's a lot of labor. And then you got to balance your labor and make sure that you're making money. Make sure your P&L at the end of the month is, you know, healthy. Because you're going to want to expand. Well, good. I am glad that we've been able to do 12 episodes. And I'm glad that this is about to get better. I think it's only getting better every episode. Every episode, we're learning a little bit more about how the interview process goes and how uh, I should read my notes beforehand, and I still don't. He still doesn't. I just feel like if I come in here and I haven't read the notes, I, I am not jaded into answering some sort of way. But maybe... It's but a more natural response. If you read the notes, there wouldn't be a law at times. And then you would make Vic's job a little bit easier. Did you not hear? Well, people are going to see the podcast tomorrow with my dad. I think it runs in the family. Like, I'm just trying to make it more difficult for him because I don't want a weak son. Ba -dum -ba -dum wow. <laughs> Cue the theatrics with the pen. <laughs> okay, well, this was fun. 
Yeah, this was fun. Is that your impersonation of me? This was great. <laughs> Pop-ups, food halls, ghost kitchens, food trucks. Oh, my. Till next time. Mm-hmm.